The 1910s found France in a somewhat unenviable position navy-wise. A few decades ago, she'd been the second largest navy on the planet. Now, she wasn't even the second largest navy in Europe. Germany had claimed that particular position, and the United States was displacing France further down the line on a global level. And even the Russians looked like they were going to catch up. France had precisely one Dreadnought class, and one first-generation Super Dreadnought class under construction. And having worked out after the Corbets that on the Britannias the main battery should probably outrange the secondary battery, they now faced the various other major navies unhelpfully moving on upwards to second generation Super Dreadnoughts. The Nevada, Queen Elizabeth and Bayern classes were all about to be laid down. So as 1911 rolled round into 1912, the initial ideas for the next generation of French battleships were being discussed. Interestingly, at this point there was basically no serious discussion of increasing the gun calibre. The 13.4 inch of the Britannias was the basis of the concepts. Three main contenders were circulated. A faster version of Britannia with the same 10 guns in the same 5 twin mounts. An alternate design with 12 guns in 4 turrets in super firing pairs but not four triples. Instead this would have each pair with a quad turret lower down and a twin turret super firing above it. And finally, a wild card option reverting to 12 inch guns, but with no less than 16 of them in four quad turrets in super firing pairs fore and aft, something that would exceed the then building at the time Brazilian Rio de Janeiro in barrel number, if not sadly turrets. It was suggested that the second design with the quads and twins could be done with three quad turrets but at the time it was felt that a quad 13.4 inch would be too heavy for a super firing position, and problems with blast effects on the Britannia class amidships turret seemed to rule out that layout at the moment. However, the 12 gun option was preferred, and taken forward for progression. A new protective scheme was also introduced to help cope with torpedo strikes. The idea was that the secondary battery casement armour would run down about 10 foot inside of the main armour belt to create a so-called cuirass du casson, which in theory would deflect any torpedo explosion that made it through the belt and the outer hull upwards and outwards since the sandwiched area between the two layers of armour would be fitted with gratings and light hatches to facilitate the blast of transfer energy upwards. 20 5.5 inch guns were planned for the secondary battery with an unusual layout of 10 twin casements, 5 per side, along with 4 above water trainable torpedo tubes. Propulsion was equally odd, the high fuel costs of direct drive turbines were addressed by driving the outer shafts with vertical triple expansion engines for cruising speeds, with high speed turbines only on the inner shafts for wartime high speed sailing. This initial design was then further analysed, with various disagreements arising amongst the naval staff as to what was the best approach, especially with some of the more novel features like the armour scheme, propulsion system and the twin casements. There was also uncertainty as to the viability of the quad turret and so the design split again into two, having acquired some more secondary guns in the process. The main battery was now laid out as per Britannia in one design, and in three quad turrets with one fore, one aft and one amidships. Uh, this was compensated for by a radical reduction of the superstructure, allowing for that amidships turret position which had been previously ruled out. In the latter option, each turret had four twin casements clustered around each turret, with a pair on each side. The weight savings of the quad turret option would allow an increase in speed to 21 knots, and this, as well as other advantages, finally put down the reworked Britannia design for good, whilst the torpedo tubes were swapped for six underwater models. The clever torpedo defence system also got discarded at this point in favour of a more conventional anti-torpedo bulkhead. With a final displacement of just over 25,000 tonnes, five ships were ordered, Normandie, Languedoc, Flandre, Gascogne, and Bern. Of these, Bern would be slightly different, ordered with an all high speed turbine engine setup, whilst the others would have the hybrid system. A few last minute changes saw the twin casements dropped and single casements for the now 24 gun secondary battery substituted in, 
Uh, the power plant ended up being rated for about 31,500 shaft horsepower. The belt armor was settled at 300 millimeters maximum thickness, which is just under 12 inches. Relatively thin for a ship of this period, but more could not be afforded along with the main battery that had been chosen as the insistence in French design schools for the ship to be armoured along the full length, albeit obviously somewhat thinner at either end, restricted the maximum displacement that could be put for the main belt thickness. All ships in the class except Bern were laid down in 1913, with the latecomer starting on the 5th of January 1914. However, as war clouds gathered, factories were repurposed and men were called up into the army, leaving only those ships close to completion to be finished. The Normandies were far from this point, and so slow work was undertaken to get the hulls up to a point that they could be launched, basically to clear the slipways. And the first four ships were thus duly dispatched, but Bern, less advanced than the rest, was left in place. Of the four launched, Gascogne arguably had the most additional work done, and after the war's end and the recovery of some of her armour plate, which had been taken by the Germans during the fall of Lille, and then rediscovered lying around various crop factories after the war, some thought was given to completing her to allow her to form a four-ship squadron with the Britannias, but little action was actually taken to fulfil this. Further thought was given to trying to complete the class as designed, also to possibly reworking the guns, fire control and armour scheme, or even to cutting the ships in half, putting in more boilers to get them up to about 26 knots and for completing them that way. But in the end, a rather bankrupt France couldn't afford any of these, and the four launched hulls were scrapped in the early 1920s. Bern, still on the stocks, would instead be completed as an experimental aircraft carrier. But that is another story. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.